This is the next David and Goliath story. I got in... You know, it doesn't even look fun, does it? Um, I got involved in the Vioxx litigation early, and I got in a position to try the very first one. Vioxx was kind of a super aspirin drug. Uh, it's a, it's a, called a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Daniela's written a brilliant paper on this. But um, uh, it basically is, the idea behind it is to be like an Advil that won't disrupt your stomach. Okay? And so um, I go to try this case, and I go to try this case in a county called Angleton, Angleton, Texas. Actually, that's the county seat. The name of the county is Brazoria, but it's a suburb of Houston. So you've got half of the jurors are Houston people. Uh, um, we pick the jury, and, and in the process of picking the jury, we wind up with a bunch of um, Republicans that really hate what I do for a living. They don't like torts. They don't like product liability suits. Y'all are getting into products liability right now. Um, they don't like that, and that's what I have here. Now, you need to understand juror mentality where I come from in Texas. They're very anti-plaintiff's lawyer by and large, in spite of what you read in the paper, the Republicans at least, but they're very um, pro-death penalty. Uh, um, uh, Justice Scalia told me the other day that he babysits the Fifth Circuit and the Fifth Circuit puts out more death penalty cases than anywhere else that he has to deal with, and it's because of Texas. And I explained to him that in Texas, growing up, in, uh, uh, it's, it's a required course in, in, in high school. It's a junior level course, death penalty, 101. And, you know, and, and Justice Scalia says to me, he says, well, I want to tell you a real story. He said, this is actually in a transcript. The judge is witherspooning a jury. Now, witherspoon is a U.S. Supreme Court case that says to sit on a death penalty case, you have to be able to assess the death penalty if the facts and the evidence warrants it. And so the judge has to qualify. In other words, on a death penalty case, you're not allowed to sit on the jury if you're anti-death penalty. That's what witherspoon stands for, one of the propositions of the case. So the judge is witherspooning the jury. So the judge says, you know, um, and he does it individually, he's Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so. And, and he starts out and he says, now, uh, uh, you've got to be able to uh, 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 give the death penalty if the evidence warrants it, if the facts warrants it, if, if, the, if my instructions warrant it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is there anybody out there who'd have trouble giving the death penalty if, if all of that stuff's true? One fella raises his hand. He says, well, Your Honor, I understand this is... Uh, Prisoners being held in Huntsville? The judge says, yes. I said, well, that's, that's a pretty far drive. I can do it on Tuesdays or Thursdays. <laughs> you can just see the DA. He'll do. <laughs> so I'm sitting here with this case, and I wind up with 11 Republicans on my jury. And I try this, I, 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 I mean... I can't, I can't win a product liability case. Now the world is attending this trial in terms of those interested. Um, I've got three of the top law firms in the country against me on the other side. They're massive law firms. Merck spent two billion dollars on lawyers' fees and expert witnesses defending their Vioxx cases, of which I tried one-fifth of them. So here's me and my law firm, big by a plaintiff's firm. I mean, we've got offices in Palo Alto, LA, Houston, and New York. I've got almost 40 lawyers. I've got a decent sized firm, but it's me. And, and, and that means it's my resources up against this giant. It, this, is, this is the way you feel. And they fight like dogs. And um, David was one of my expert witnesses, Dr. Eagleman in the dashiki back there from Brown, and, and can verify this stuff. But it, it was a vicious, vicious fight. Um, so I had to do something. I can't win a products liability case. I've got a products liability case. All I've got are a bunch of Republicans that watch CSI because they are just are law and order. 
I'm seriously. You read on their juror questionnaire, what are the three favorite TV shows? CSI. I have seen one episode in my life. Who in here has seen CSI? <laughs> Moved to Texas. Um, I just, but I'm sitting there and I'm talking to Dr. Bob, one of my lawyers. I said, Dr. Bob, we can't win a products case. I said, we got to do something. We got to try a different case. He says, you're right. So we did. We decided we wouldn't try a products liability case because we couldn't win that. Instead, I'll give you this snippet of my opening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to represent Bob and Carol Ernst. Bob and Carol Ernst, wonderful people, outdoorsy people. They like to rollerblade. They like to run, uh, ran marathons. They'd go to kite festivals. They'd be outdoors for anything they could. They bought a bicycle built for two and entered tandem races together as a couple. Love's a funny thing. It's a wonderful thing. Some people are never fortunate enough to find that, that true love. Some are lucky enough to find it at an early age. For some, they find it later. Bob and Carol Ernst found it later in life, but they found it. The love that warms you on the coldest day. But as much fun as they had together, and as much joy as they brought each other, things began to change. They changed because Bob Ernst died. He died even though they'd only been married 11 months and he was only 59 years old. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's what this case is about, the death of Bob Ernst. And you are the detectives in this story. <laughs> this is CSI Angleton. See, I turned it into a criminal case. I knew I had a jury that would give the death penalty if I could prove they murdered Bob Ernst. <laughs> They'd never award me money for what happened in a bad products case, but if these were cold-blooded killers, they would fry them. <laughs> so I said, you're the trial detectives. This is CSI Angleton. I said, and what you're going to find is you're going to find the corporate culprits that Merck killed Bob Ernst. I had to cut that picture. They had some trees over here, but I wanted absolutely no life in it whatsoever. <laughs> so I cropped it down, elevated it up, and it looks just cold, harsh, and steel. Because that's what justice requires. And that's what you're here for. So as CSI detectives, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do? Why are we going to de determine this? Where is this trial going? Well, let me tell you, just like any good TV show, we're going to look for the motive. We're going to look for the means. We're going to look at the dead body. And then we'll look at their alibis. Now, you see, these Republican juries we get, they would accept defenses on the part of a product liability defendant. But if they're alibis, that makes it sound like they're crooks trying to get away with something. So instead of calling them defenses, we call them alibis. And I said, that's what we're going to do. And we'll start with the motive. Let me lay this down to you and let you see what it is. Merck had the motive. The motive was money. And I launched into it. Now, for the results of this trial, 